And here we are back for round two to make some more misplays. Yeah, let's play first. Uh, this is close. But no banana. Banana. This is a little worse. It kind of needs a mountain to get going. I'm going to keep it. Because, like, we get a... Oh, I was going to say a mana rock. Hopefully this will do what we want it to do. But I'm still going to take it. Um, we can kill anything super early that they play. With the Vendetta, we can hit the Felwar Stone next turn. Hopefully they're playing red and we can get out um, our elf. But even if they're not, we just fixed ourselves for blue. Well, there you go. We can now cast anything we want. Thanks for the fixin'. Of note, we still have Vendetta up. <clears throat> so I've got to decide if I want to Sadisi away um, Rada. And she's, like, Rada's really not what I want to Sadisi away. I'm clearly playing the land. Like, I guess a 4 6 Death Touch is better than something that taps for mana. And, like, what are we going to go get? Well, let's find out. Freeform. Commander Cube. Like, I'd probably just want to get some sort of ramp spell, wouldn't I? Like a Pilgrim's Eye. Looks pretty good here. Like, ideally, that's what we're sacrificing to her. Uh, Glissa actually looks really good if I can, you know, figure out how to use it. Because that lets us uh, pop their Seer's Lantern. Maybe I just want to do that. Play a four, play a four six death touch. Have a way to blow up their artifact. Yeah, that that actually seems pretty good. And then if I just draw lands naturally, you know, cool. We get there. If I don't, that's all right. Like we've got plenty of other stuff to draw. And just being able to like destroy their stuff has to be good. Because, like, red-blue plays a lot of artifacts anyway, doesn't it? So they're going to start drawing cards, which is neat. But we're going to start messing up their cards and hitting them in the face. And as soon as they play a creature, we kill it. And we can just swing for seven a turn. Like, we don't have to blow up the Seer's Lantern. We can, but it's by no means required... We would need to tap three mana because that's the casting cost of Seer's Lantern, and then we can blow it up. But if they're going to draw a card every turn, then us, like, taking a turn off damage to do that doesn't seem great. I will pretty much vendetta any creature that they play. Well, okay, so not any creature that they play. Okay, that doesn't actually do anything. Yeah, with Burn Away up. I think I probably just pass. Like, I'm kind of tempted to blow that up, but then I don't get to leave Burn Away up. I could also just attack with both and see what they do. With Burn Away and Vendetta, we should be fine. However, they're probably going to play a big thing. But I don't care if they play a big thing. I've got Vendetta. I just kill it in response. Eh, there's no need to get greedy. We don't know for sure that they even have anything, and if they do, I kind of don't care. Yeah, sure, you chump. That works. make a speed bump. I can even have Burn Away and then Vendetta in response if they have a counter spell. Just 
Destroy target monocolored creature. Okay. No. All right. So if you want to play the blow up artifacts game, I can play that game. Or I can just hit you for three and have Vendetta up. See, that's that's the challenge. Is Vendetta seems really good. Yeah. All right. Take your damage. Like they tap out for a big thing and then go to move their thing onto it. Well, that sucks. I mean, we get to kill it, but we're taking eight. And losing our board state. Must be nice to have all that mana. Alright, we can blow up another thing. But they're throwing a lot of cards. This one's not going so well. Scrap came in kind of handy there. I do feel like I'm playing better-ish. Maybe not. I did get out my blow up an artifact thing and never blow up any artifacts, but... There you go. I just hope this is not so big that it can survive burn away. Okay, well, that's not, but I have a feeling whatever they cast afterwards will be. It's probably just the discard cards shrine. Alright, we can't kill that with burn away. So I think we're just done here. I'll take a hit. There's no reason to tell them we don't have a Wrath effect in the deck. Oh. Except we're just dead. Because that's how magic works. I want Reclamation Sage in this deck. I kind of don't want the Night Howler. I have been somewhat unimpressed with that. As that's not really what we're going to do. That doesn't seem like it's going to do much. Farika is a reasonable way to uh, make snake tokens. Like it lets us do something with creatures that die, and it looks like there will be some creatures that die. But I think I'm still fine with all of this. Uh, yeah, I still want to play first. I'd like to see a good hand. This is not a good hand. I do get to cycle a Baron more looking for red. Like, I would keep this if I had the double red or a mana rock. Like, I could easily see this hand drawing into our ramp elves and doing something. I could also see it just, you know, doing nothing. I think it's got to go back, which is really sad. And I think I probably keep this. And I probably keep that too. Like, we've got a lot of stuff we want to be able to ramp into, and this kind of lets us do that. We're going to have to hit one of those reward cards for ramping, otherwise we're just not doing much, but... Prismatic Lens is a good card, too. Like, do we just snap off Vendetta the first thing we see? One, two, three, four, five. I think we probably do. Like, it's either going to deal four to us or more than four. So let's just kill the thing. There's our game plan. That was it in its entirety. I'd like to sacrifice something to her. You know, I could sacrifice Sadisi to herself... And then what do I get? Like, Primeval Bounty? 
We could get Thrax and see if he deals with that. We could get Baby Sadisi and see if he deals with that. We could get Colligan and just be like, all right, take five. See if you can beat it. I kind of don't hate that as a plan. Because, like, our, our game plan is very one-dimensional here. We can't stop what they're doing. They're probably going to beat us. Okay. Now that we've accepted that, what can we do to actually win the game? Well, Colligan gets through everything but uh, the uh, Atarka he has. One, two, three, four, five. And he's several mana away from being able to do that. It blanks any sorcery speed removal. We could also get the Imperius pre perfect and just like start making little dudes. We could also just keep the big thing there and be all right with that. Because we're going to draw some crap in the not too distant future. I could get a land, like that's always an option. I could get Zendikar Resurgent because I have seven mana. But I'm not sure what's going to be better in my hand than a 4-6 on the board. All right, we've made our decision. We're keeping Sadisi. I'm not feeling real good about our chances, but it is a 4-6 death touch. That's not irrelevant. deep in the tank probably has a removal spell and wonders if he didn't tutor with this his hand those last two cards have got to be absurd and they are you you cannot cast spells without these cards i would argue that basic land is one of the most important cards in magic especially from a limited player's perspective one of the reasons i get derped up a bit when drafting cube which hopefully is still entertaining to watch me mess up stuff is cube plays a lot more like constructed. Like there's a limited experience where you're drafting, but you're kind of drafting a deck, and then there's interactions within that deck that you need to know about. This one is themed after commander, so most of the interactions here commander players would know. I'll be honest, when I make a commander deck, I kind of just pick a cool general and then throw in cool cards to go with it and don't think about it too much and go play with Tom, Derek, and Archie and see what happens. So I haven't actually learned any of the commander interactions and how stuff works. That said, it's still a hell of a lot of fun to play with powerful cards. All right, we'll give this a pause while our opponent figures out their line. Opponent finally settled on Dark Petition. Which is very similar to Sidisi on an empty board, like it kind of just does the same thing, except mine can be a 4-6. Can yours be a 4-6? I didn't think so. Like, there's an argument to hold one land in hand so that we would have landfall if we hit Primeval Bounty. There's also an argument not to, because if they're playing the Blue Shrine, they may very easily be playing the Black Shrine. Which would make us want to have the land so we could hold a removal spell. Like, I don't know. It's so many things to think about, and my, my brain just, it has trouble thinking. I just want to turn two two sideways and play combat tricks. Thinking's hard. Okay, forest is a really good draw. Um, we'll go ahead and get an island out there, because why not? Make them be afraid of some sort of counter spell. Bravely clutched victory from the jaws of defeat last round. Despite my best efforts. Nothing? Okay. So DC will kill you. It's a five turn clock. We've got some dead draws here. That doesn't really hurt us much. Unless we draw exactly resurgent. Well, I guess we can... Uh go with the Sidisi Brood. Hmm. 
Look at all those Sadisis. And look at all those cards I milled. Which basically don't do anything. Except let him know that they're in the deck if we go to a game three. We have almost enough creatures for Sadisi to be a thing. I wonder if he got the scrap with the Dark Petition just to take me off a of mana. It's not unreasonable to think that someone would do that. Ruptured Spire and Transguild Promenade are probably also very high picks, which explains why I didn't see any, as that goes in the five color stuff deck. We're not really splashing for Sadisi, but we're splashing for Thrax. Okay. All right. So it's a two for two. We're going to need something. Can I cast that? Four, five, six, seven. Five, six, seven. I sure can. Let's do that then. Hey, what's up? This is lethal next turn. Can you kill it? Lava Lanche. Seems pretty good. It's kind of like Genesis Wave, except instead of maybe putting lands into play, your opponent's stuff dies. God, if he plays his own Atarka and kills our Atarka, that's going to be a Tarking Ridiculous. Alright, so he can get a 2-drop, which is probably destroy target legendary permanent, because we didn't see that. Oh, I got Cyclonic Rift? Okay. I guess that buys him a turn? Let's say if he's got a discard spell, you got me, but... We don't have time to derp around with Sylvan Bounty. Although it's it's neat that we have it. Woohoo! Did not think we were getting there, and Atarka Dragon Lorded them out. What's up? Get a target. Is it crazy to consider spider spawning if we're doing stuff with Sadisi anyway? Like, I could easily take out one of my do-nothings. Although I like the instant board state you get with this. And I, I like the Zendikar Resurgent into Genesis Wave. Like, this deck is just too much fun. I could make it better with a spider spawning and the night howler. But I kind of don't want to. <laughs> and Jared, Jared might actually be a reasonable finisher for this deck and probably does more than Sadisi. Cause you can get it back. You can sacrifice your little derpy stuff. You can sacrifice a token. It's a little harder to cast, but it can also burn your opponent out. Uh, I'm not sold on that. Let's just run it back and have some fun. Happy little games. Happy little games. Alright. It has the stone, it has the pilgrim's eye, it has the reclamation stage. We keep. I think it's relatively unlikely that we're going to want to do anything other than play this, so I'm going to do that. Like, if you have... Mainly you want to cycle these if you have... Um, if you draw them late, but early you almost always want to play them. If our opponent plays blue here, we could have a very interesting next turn. They didn't. So, I think I probably just want to wreck Sage and pop their thing. Like, I can ramp myself next turn... But I'm not really... Like, if I play this, I can get Sadisi down quickly. If I play the Rex Sage, I've got something that can attack and block. And he can't... Like, we get to eat a card automatically. He spent three mana on that. We spend three mana for a 2-1 and get rid of it. Let's do that. Maybe he kept his hand because it, he had to have this to cast a, a super cool 5-drop or something. 
Well, that obviously would have been better, but here we are. All right, so you get me... I don't need to get red currently. You get me red, you get me another color. I've already got a land drop this turn, so let's let's hit for two. Play a land. Play an elf. Get the island. And if we draw a land, we can start a Tarka-ing. If we don't, we can just play the Pilgrim's Eye and start doing things there. So DC is also pretty good. That's not so good. And we would like to stop it from doing things, but here we are. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six mana. We can slam Sadisi. I think we attack with both of these things. Like, they're fine with us being in their graveyard. Um, that is going to be hard for us to beat, assuming they have any reasonable follow-up. Like, I think I like play Sadisi and try to attack. If I play Sadisi, I cannot also play this. So tap out here. Yeah, it's probably better to play the Pilgrim's Eye, get a land, play um, Rada as well, and then just slam Atarka next turn. So let's do that. Play this. Yes, we use the ability. Do we need the mountain? I mean, we've got some double greens and some triple greens. But our red is a little more vulnerable. So if they slam a big monster this turn and equip the Lightning Greaves to it, we probably lose. That's a big monster. It's a big monster. And if we could kill the Lightning Greaves, we could win because of reasons and stuff, but it's going to kill us and we can't stop it. So we're going to take eight. Is there a way we can make them take more than we're taking? I don't think so because we'll hit for 12, leaving them at five. We take eight. Like, we don't have a haste creature. Can Sadisi do anything? I mean, I guess I can chomp block with it. Oh, gods. This is so bad. Our world is broken. Like, I can chomp block with it and then draw Glissa. No, uh, that, that'll do, Donkey. That'll do. So we're just dead either way. That's a shame. I felt like we had a chance. And then we didn't. GG's have been called. We were just basically a turn behind there. God, I was going to say Thunderbreak Regent's one of the ways we win that game. Because if, if we don't block... And then we swing in next turn. Like, he's got to have nothing in hand. But we draw the Thunder Break, break Regent. We've got double red now. Um, we can block, you know, chump, hit for 12. And then next turn, they've got to start chumping. Because they'd be at 5 and both of the dragons are lethal with a Tarka. Um, so it, I think we were closer in that game than we thought. The, the real line that ended up losing us the game was potentially popping the Seer's Lantern. Instead of saving it for the Lightning Greaves. Which might have been worth being aware of. That said, uh, that's going to wrap us up here. Hopefully you've enjoyed what you've seen watching me muddle through uh, Legendary Cube. If you have, you can check out more such muddlings as well as, I would say, decent play. Actually, I think it's okay to say I'm getting fairly good at Limited. Um, we'll be drafting Shadows soon. Uh, so you can see that all at the stream, which is twitch.tv slash simulan. You can also follow me on Twitter if you want to hear strange comments about magic. I'm at Simulan. And the commander videos I've mentioned a couple times, we do at newmontgaming.com if you want to check those out too. It's just four buddies playing commander. Everybody's better at it than me, but I'm kind of the guy there that, that makes the fun decks that everybody beats up. But fun times are had by all. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. I will see you next week, hopefully with some shadows over Innistrad if I can make that work. And uh, y'all have a good one.